Um, okay, so patch of 12th December 2017. It's a lot of changes. I'll take you through it. Grubby, you're blocking the text. Yes. That's just the way I like it. It's going to be a new quest. New ranked season. Uh, so this patch right now, today's the 12th of December. It's live on North America. It is going to be live on Europe tonight. Something like 3, 5 a.m. European time probably. For me, that means next stream. So tomorrow's stream. I'm playing on North America today. After these patch notes com conclude, after these patch notes conclude, I'm gonna play North American Hero League. If you wanna see the patch notes for yourself, type exclamation mark patch. And this patch is going to be the massive update about laning changes. So let's go through it. First of all, the matchmaking system has been updated to include a performance-based data-driven system which takes individual player performance into account when determining MMR gains and losses. Read this blog, guys. I recommend it because there's a lot of things that you're not going to know necessarily. Read it. Okay, you can find this uh, at the patch notes on my stream, exclamation mark patch click on this link basically what it means mostly is that you will reach your intended MMR quicker I will give you one example bronze 5 if a bronze 5 account is played by a grandmaster it'll take him about 300 games to get to his appropriate MMR in the old system in the new 150 games so he'll get there faster he or she That's the example, the simple example, okay? There's, there's more, obviously. This is a big one. The in-game camera height has been significantly increased in order to provide more visibility of the battlefield. Huge. It is huge. Outlines will now display on terrain when playing Junkrat or Lucio and Hanzo. This should allow for a more accurate view of what can be used for the frag launcher, bounces, and wall rides. New hero Hanzo. Uh, you're going to see some Hanzo videos on my YouTube, so you can just see how he works there. He's got, uh, got some cool abilities. They're all arrows. 2018 gameplay update. This is the big one. Early game and laning changes, stealth changes, and the matchmaking. Firstly, battlegrounds. First battleground objective event will now activate 90 seconds into the match following a small warning Basically what it means is oh, they don't have the summary here. Okay, so anyway, it's like All warnings are now 30 seconds instead of 15 or 30 seconds Most battlegrounds start about three minutes in with their objective instead of sometimes one and a half minutes sometimes more Except the the maps where the lane is part of the objective, like Blackheart Bay, the chest and the doubloons are on the lane. Braxis Holdout, the beacon is practically on the lane, and so is Dragonshire. So for these, the battleground objective will still activate quickly for these three. But for all the others where the objective takes you out of the lane, it'll be pretty much three minutes. So what that means is instead of being about level 3.8 by the time you go to most of these objectives, you'll be about level 7. A pretty big difference. Of course, pending early game advantage. It also means you'll have more periods of laning, rotations and mercenary camps before the first objective. Uh, the minimap will show where the next objective objective spawns are going to be and yeah and 30 second warnings across the board here big one regeneration globes will now become neutral if not claimed within three seconds the neutral one looks purple instead of red or blue and this one will also stay for three seconds so the total regen globe time is six seconds 
before I think it was eight and it was uh, personal only. Now you can get two globes, one of your own and one of the opponents. So it will be very important, both in tri lane, quad lane, single lane, to zone out opponents from picking up their own globes so that it becomes yours. It's a really big deal. Structural changes are also huge. They no longer have ammo, so passive ammo depletion tactics no longer work. Like locusts from Abathur, some demon warriors standing there as Chen or Illidan and using evasion to, to deplete ammo. These are no longer valid tactics. Tower vision range has been increased. Tower damage to minions has been reduced by a quarter. Structures now have a half second warm up period before firing. It must face their targets completely. I've tried this, it, it works. So if you go into a fort that's facing the other way, it looks around and it doesn't fire immediately. The third tower is gone and their XP and health and damage has been added to the other three buildings. Fortune keeps now have true sight, just like the core, so they reveal stealth. Minion base damage has been increased by 10%. Minions spawn quicker. This one I want to talk about. Uh, this actually makes up for some of the ammunition uh, changes. So minions versus towers is still, I think, fairly equal as before. But uh, minion spawn delay means if you do a five-man mid-brawl against a five-man mid-brawl, as people always do for some bad reason, because it's fun, I guess. And then you go to the top and the bot lane to soak. You'll be late. You'll miss several minutes of XP and it sets you behind. Before, you can pretty much get there on time anyway, depending on how long the mid fight is. So it is more advantageous in the new patch to spread out to your respective lanes, whatever, whatever they may be recommended to spread out. Mercenary camps spawn 60 seconds after the game begins, which is earlier than before. Siege camps can now be dodged. That means that a ranged assassin without self-sustain, without healing, can take a siege camp without taking any damage at all. Tracer, for instance. Same thing in the lane. Hellbats uh, don't spawn as often. They are harder to kill when they're still neutral. And they're harder to kill, but not as much, when they are in the lane. They also do an armor debuff. An armor debuff. So the more they attack something, be it lane minions or heroes, the more damage that target takes. And they are like promoted minions. They take less damage from structures. So they're great pushers. The wizard gives a spell armor aura. In lane, it gives 30. When it's still a neutral merc, it's 15. So when you are, as Sonia, are taking a solo bruiser camp, do make sure to first kill the wizard so that the rest doesn't take reduced damage from your slam and whirlwind. Also, in lane, when you're escorting it, do make sure to use your healer, Morales, Uther, etc., Rhaegar. Uh, do do that. Do heal your wizards when you're pushing with it so that you continue to have 30 spell armor on everything. It's going to be great to protect your wizard with shield on Tassadar, heal it with Morales, heal it with Uther. And then just push hard with it. 5 on 5. If you are level 16 v 15, you have a bruiser camp. Definitely worth pushing with it now. Whereas before it was like sent and forget. Separate camps are dodgeable now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they have more health in lane. They don't spawn as often. And they cannot be damaged by structures. Battlegrounds. There's some cool sandbox changes. I'm gonna skim over them. I'll just scroll slowly so you can read it. But I don't want to talk about it too much because it's not super relevant right now. 
but it's really cool it does matter a lot it's great for practice especially for pro teams but not as relevant for us in the stream grave golems will continue attacking forts and keeps quickly no longer get their aa reduced their aa speed it will no longer interrupt its own attacks and it will no longer kill force walls by tassadar every eight seconds rather than hitting buildings it will just walk over it and crush it battleground rotation is going to include warhead but no garden or voskaya uh, stealth stealth changes stand still as a stealth hero and after one and a half second your blip disappears entirely you're truly invisible and they are revealed in the usual ways. But it doesn't work the invisibility on beacon points. Also stealth heroes are more visible than before. They have a more significant outline. It makes it easier for people with bad monitors. Or bad eyesight. Or bad settings. Or bad awareness. To see cloaked heroes. It's going to be easier for everyone across the board. I think that's a great change. And to compensate for that, they made all the stealth heroes stronger. Because of course if you can see them more easily, their effect is weaker. And the invisibility effect doesn't make up for it. So they made them all reworked and stronger. And I'll show you that as we get to it. Some UI changes and improvements, and this is a cool one. You can use Alt left click on a hero portrait to generate notifications. For example, ally help, when someone will be respond, whether an enemy hero is missing, and whether or not you are on equal talent tiers or heroic. Now, hero changes. As you can see, all the cloaked heroes, Vala, Abathur, Vikings, Hammer, and Muradin. A lot of these are really small. We'll go to it. Nova. Now, I think we looked at this before, but we'll just go through it pretty quickly. Snipe damage is reduced, but she gets the baseline quest of Snipe Master. It's pretty cool. Her lethal decoy is now a base part of her kit, of Holo Decoy. She has 15 movement speed. Advanced cloaking is part of her base kit. 15% movement speed while stealth. And Ghost Protocol is part of your base kit as well. And a lot of changes to her talents as well. And I think I went through this before. So do look at it. Do check it out. But I don't want to probably read everything. Because I'm eager to go to the uh, Hero Leagues. And I want to show you my preferential heroes. I don't play Nova much, but I do play Samuro. Uh, Samuro basically is as follows. Mirror images do far less damage than before. They no longer are instantly destroyed by structures. And you can swap to them from level 1 to 9. And even if you don't take Illusion Master, even with Bladestorm, you can also swap to them. At a large cooldown, rather than a short one. Illusion Master cooldown is now 8 seconds for swapping instead of 6. Here's that uh, swap, you see? 25 seconds cooldown. Uh, Windwalk talents are now good instead of useless. It's actually really good. Just I'll show you the Windwalk build. Level 1. 40% movement speed, which is 10 more than mount, during windwalk and after it. It's fantastic. 30 armor during and for 3 seconds after. Which is much better than before. And the mirror images gain that armor too. There's no windwalk at 7, but there's one at 13. Uh, Kavarimi. And then at 16. Uh, mirror images don't benefit from it. Okay. But it doesn't matter that much. Harsh Winds is obviously better since the other Windwalk talents are good. And he still has that level 20 Windwalk timer reduction. So he can do a lot of Windwalks. It's really cool now. 
for the rest a little bit of reworks what more i can tell you is that samuro's base damage with critical has gone uh up quite a lot it's a really big difference overall if samuro and images are attacking something he does slightly less damage than before but he gains a lot more agency over what to damage because samuro himself does more and the fact that you can swap to your images from level one onwards even on a long cooldown even without being able to control them it's pretty darn useful you can also choose which direction you want the real samuro to be in when you image split so that's uh that's a really big deal it's in the direction of your cursor Valera, huge change as well. Her movement speed while stealth is 20 instead of 10. The increase. Her Garot got a lot of buffs. Longer silence period. And all three basic abilities, when charging up your Vanish for 3 seconds, they gain a teleportation of 5 range, which is uh, basically the auto attack range of most ranged assassins like Vala. It's 5.5, this is 5. So she can teleport on all three basic abilities when stealth for a while, which is a really big deal. Uh, a lot more changes as well. Hemorrhoids, bonus damage to targets affected by Garot, blah, blah, blah. Basically, it's the teleportation and the movement speed on stealth, the 20%. That's a big deal. And then at level 20, you can also choose elusiveness. She gains 140% movement speed while stealth which is a pretty big deal you guys don't like hemorrhoids sergeant hemorrhoids rework um yeah so a lot of changes to valera but this is not a really big deal it's like whatever zerto gains a lot of changes he's gonna be even more difficult he's gonna have a single talent rewind on his alt they removed the auto attack alt a number of other changes. I don't play Zero that much, but he was pretty bonkers. And I see they don't change him. He has some kind of massive lifesteal from spells at 20. Look at this. 75% ability damage heal. It's pretty crazy. And he no longer has rewind, so it's probably really interesting. And he can get a lot of lifesteal from uh, auto attack still as well. He's going to be good, but you need to be good to be good with it. Abathur, more locust health, less locust health from talent, and no more, no more ammo <laughs> refill because there's no ammo. Uh, same thing and more damage. Cool. Hammer. So this is the hammer rework. Mm, I want to go ahead and say that I get what they're trying to do with her to make her a siege hero that can get big armor, unstoppable, and has to siege a lot. So that differentiates her from something like Hanzo, Raynor, or Vala, in that she's more immobile and has benefits from Siege. But pretty much 90% of the Nexus takes a big dump on you when you're immobile. So I see that everything is orange, which means it's changed from what it was on PTR and live. I don't like her on live, would never play her. But I see some buffs. So let's take a look at it. I am. This is completely new to me. More health. Way more basic attack damage. Because she was bad. A little bit less damage from level 1 talent. Miles from rounds. Hover Siege. 25% movement speed was... Not good. She gets uh, Hover Siege and uh, the bonus range. The graduating. Which is not as good as it was at 16. But it's now at 7. 40% is a lot more acceptable. Uh, shrapnel mines is like armor reduction from mines. You got some cool new mine talents as well. So this is, this one in particular is like what 9% buff. This is the one that matters the most. No, I know the hammer rework is live already. Thank you, uh, Divivoni. It's just a buff to her. I've seen a lot of bad hammers recently that siege up and die. Uh, I've seen, I've played NA quick match during my trip in China at Gold Club World Championship. I have seen two hammers that did not unsiege when enemy Artanis lasered them when they were at full life. 
Instead, they pressed the armor button, 50 armor. And for a while, the laser took off less health. Still didn't unsiege. And didn't. And died. Full life, by the way. Laser. 100 to 0. And they looked. Two different hammers in two games. This is what we have to deal with, with the sieging hammers. But it's going to get a lot better. And I think they'll be definitely a great use for hammer. In Hero League, specifically, when you have, for instance, something like ETC Morales Hammer in a tri-lane. Or Zarya Morales Hammer. It's going to be great, I think. It's going to be the best. This is not a big deal. This is uh, cool, but should happen more often. New announcer Hanzo. Some cool Hanzo skins. New mounts. Winterville. Naughty Great Father Winter Melfure. <laughs> New skins and stuff. And that's it. Uh, bug fixes. Current seems upper body is now animated correctly. It's really nice. Uh. Oh wow, I didn't know he was ca categorized as a monster. Yeah. Uh, there's a few really trap talents on Sergeant Hammer. Like, uh, there's this weird talent on the new hammer. Because, you know, I didn't really talk with you guys about it yet. There's this talent on the new hammer, which is like... When you are sieged... Every auto attack reduces the cooldown of your thrusters. And there's just no way that that's possibly good. Here, let me show you the one. There's going to be situations... Oh, she's a specialist, of course. There's going to be situations where it is good, but it should not be. Just got her washed. While in siege mode, hitting heroes with basic attacks reduce thrusters' cooldown. So, when you're sieged... Thrusters is your escape, so you don't have to have these unsiege animations. To dodge a lunar flare, if you don't want to take it, you use thrusters and you, you boost it out. Then, when you want to have your thrusters back, the last thing you would do is to siege up to get it back. Because when you siege up, you now no longer have that escape. That is my main issue with this talent. It, you're playing it wrong because the talent is asking you to do it. Uh, so that's one trap talent. Another issue I feel like with the rework is that there's no option to play unsieged hammer. This is like you need to siege in order to get value out of these and much of her power is in this. Again, that's their design intent, right? So it definitely achieves their design intent. I just don't like it personally. Uh, here the only talent that isn't a siege mode talent is... Uh, spider mines detonate more often. I need to practice it to see whether this is useful. Here there's a bunch of non-siege. So it's basically level 1 you need to siege and 7 probably. And then... Uh, they buffed this talent so that's nice. Before you needed like 8 attacks to ramp up. But yeah, um, I actually think in the right comp against the right comp, it could be quite good, Sergeant Hammer. She's probably situational now, which is probably what she's supposed to be. Uh, yeah, I can show you the bundles. No problem. Yeah, I heard that Nazebo got fixed as well. Wait, let me actually open my loot because... I don't have everything yet on this server. Epic. All right, people. Yes! To start. Get your stuff Fantastic. Together. I only had Lily here and two other lamers. Like, Lily, Butcher are my favorites. And then this is... That's a great one. Really happy with that. Nice. Okay, cool. So I got more options now on North America. Let the battle begin! Oh. 
not master archery yet. <laughs> 